Hey everybody, Alex Bennett here from Agri Spray Drones. Uh, today I have Josh DePippo from Spotters Aerial Ag who makes the Roadrunner. Um, he brought us down uh, a new Roadrunner to look at. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go through that and kind of show you some, some, some of the updates, what's changed between the, the first one and the second one, um, and we'll go from there. Hey Josh, how are you? I'm good, how are you Alex? Good, not too bad. So I see what you got. This looks completely different than what we were used to seeing last season. You wanna tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so the original Roadrunner I built for myself mm -hmm. in my apartment garage. I needed something that was gonna allow me to get to more difficult to reach areas. Um, and for me at the time, bring more water with me to the field. As we've gotten to bigger drones, uh, more water volume was the biggest thing. And the second thing was, I love running out of the box of short box pickups. Yeah. We run a fleet of drones all over the, the western side of North Dakota. And so I like to be able to, to split my drones up and then bring them back together on big jobs when we need to. So finding something that could spray a quarter at a time, yeah. as well as being able to get to those hard to reach areas and run in the box of a pickup was the, the challenge that I faced. Yeah, no, this is cool. Um, I was spoiled a little bit. I actually saw it a few hours before this um, to get it in the truck and stuff like that. There's some really cool updated stuff on this. Uh, first thing I wanna do is, I think this is the coolest feature is, let's get out the, the hoist. Okay, and, sounds and good. And show kind of the features of, you know, if I'm a one man show, I just got done spraying my quarter or something like that, or I'm coming to the field, you know, I'll show you guys how to unload and load, um, you know, a J150 out of your truck. Uh, you know, these drones are awkward, they're big, they're heavy. So let's try that out. Okay, so it looks like we have electric hoist. Um, it has a removable 20 volt battery, which is really cool. I'm gonna drop this down a little bit to grab it. And then there's a rope right here that releases it. And we're gonna swing that jib all the way out around to our drone. And if you notice, the winch itself actually slides on a rail too. Go ahead and reverse this. This is cool. Okay, we got her all the way up. Now I should be able just to slide this drone around. And we're gonna turn it. And we're gonna push it back where it needs to go. Wow. That's super fast and easy. I like that a lot. Unload to be the same way. Just like that. That's awesome. Now that's gonna come standard on, on that, the, the road runner? Yep. That's awesome. That's really gonna make someone have a one man show with a rig like this. Yeah, I mean, from here you can have the drone, the generator, your chemical tanks, everything you need all in the back of your truck. Very cool. All right, a um, little bit more into it. Um, we have on this one, we have a Winco 19,000 generator. Um, we are actually, in the process of working with Winco right now to kind of design our own generators. Um, same concept, we have a 60 amp here instead of a 50, dual 30 amps, gangs of 110 there. So this generator here basically sets it up exactly how you need it to. If you're charging directly off a charger with a Roadrunner on a trailer, 
anything like that. All right, let's walk around to the back. Tell us about the back. I see this is, I meant, obviously the, the biggest difference I'm looking at right now is we went from a poly 200 gallon to looks like a stainless 350 gallon. Yep, so this is the biggest change to the new Roadrunner and it's, it's the heart of the machine. So I got pretty lucky when I was going to get a bigger, you know, bigger tank, I couldn't find anything that was in that four foot mm -hmm. um, length and still be able to get 320, 350 gallons. So I went and started looking into how to build custom stainless steel tanks. And we've got a lot of really cool features in the tank. But before we get to that, I'll talk about the plumbing system. So if those of you that are familiar with the old road runners, you had to reach your hand in be between the ladder uh, back in here to get to your um, recirculation and your suction valves. And if you guys remember, there also used to be a 15 gallon auxiliary tank here. Yeah. In the T30 days, that was really nice. You could make small batches. You could, um, you could do that for like pasture type stuff. Um, and you could, it was also really useful if you're doing test plots. That's not been as necessary as we get to bigger drones, but I know there's still a lot of guys that want to do a 60 or an, an 80 gallon hot load. Yeah. So I left the three wave valves here and then I capped the other end. So you can do a couple really cool things with this. You can either use the pump that we've already got mm -hmm. uh, as suction to fill your large tank out of a, a 275 gallon IBC tote, a hot load, um, or you can actually put a 60 or an 80 gallon mix cone in the box of your truck. So if you're running a flatbed and have a little bit of extra room, the plumbing is already set up. You don't have to pull anything apart. You don't have to replumb this. It, it's already here. Um, you can still choke off agitation or shut it off um, here and then you can shut off your suction right here. And then your filter, which is your most likely fail point, yeah. um, is really easy to access. It's right on the front of the machine. If you get any plugs, shut off your two valves um, and, and cut to your, your filter. Yeah, that, that looks really nice. Uh, once we get back to the shop, we'll, we'll go ahead and pull it out and kind of show you guys some more in-depth details on you know, the pump setup and the valves and stuff like that. Yeah, I really like that idea that you can basically tap in and push or pull with that same pump. It would make it very universal. And so this with a 350 gallon tank is designed to take hot loads. Um, but I know a lot of you guys are still gonna be mixing in the field or from your trailer. So to make that easier, instead of crawling up a vertical ladder, um, I made a staircase. You can crawl up to the top and mix all of the products into your tank here. You no longer have to lift up um, that big door and reach your head in to dump yeah. in product. It's all right here. And there's plenty of space up top to set boxes of chemical, um, adjuvants, anything else while you're mixing is, is all right up top. If you look inside of the tank, uh, it's baffled and there's dual tank cleaners. And we'll show you once we get to the other side, the tank cleaners can be ran from the base. You don't have to crawl up top to clean your tank. Um, and it's, you can't quite see from here, but it's sloped and V-bottom, so the tank drains completely. That looks really nice. So I meant really, unless you are mixing directly into that tank, if you're pulling hot loads or anything like that, you, you don't even need to be up top. You never need to climb up here. That's nice. Cool, all right, well, let's move around to the other side then. So this is my favorite part, this is your workstation. So I put this on the passenger side of the truck, so if you're in a busy, inter or a busy road, you're not trying to work right next to where cars are driving back and forth. This has got enough space um, to put your charger and all your batteries and your remote controller box away. I know a lot of people are going to either keep them in the box of their truck or the back seat of their pickup. Um, but regardless, you've got extra space. It's 18 by 24 by, by 36 foot high. So you still got plenty of storage, just like the old Roadrunner, but it's no longer designed to work out of the toolbox. So. If we get to our electrical, we've got two 30 amp twist locks um, to plug into your J150 charger. You can run this off the ground in the box of your pickup, uh, even in the back seat of your pickup on really hot days. Your two pump switches, your main pump switch is right here, um, and your uh, fresh water pump is right here. Your main pump, because it runs on full agitation, you can let that pump run all day long. You'll always have pressure to your hose reel, but you don't have to worry about deadheading. And then on the fresh water, you can also leave that on all day because that, it, this pump runs on a pressure switch. So beginning of the day, you can pull your fresh water hose out, flip your, uh, flip your fresh water pump on, it'll pressure up and shut off. 
And if you ever get chemical in your eyes, on your hands, or just want to clean your drone off at the end of the day, you've got 25 gallons of fresh water. The other thing that's different on this versus the last Roadrunner is if you remember there was a 25 gallon freshwater tank up top, it was a clear plastic tank so yeah. it sat in the sun and got algae and mold and all sorts of other stuff in it. Now it's an integrated part of our stainless steel tank. So you're never gonna get, um, you're never gonna get algae, mold, uh, any of that sort of stuff in your freshwater tank and it's all kind of enclosed. On the old tank or on the old road runners, you had to crawl up top to fill that tank, mm -hmm. just like you had to crawl up top to fill your main tank. I pulled all of that down. So your two inch fill is right here. Um, and then your fresh water is also on a three way valve, just like those, um, just like to run your main system. When it's spun to the right, it's to fill your fresh water tank. There's a float on the inside of the tank. So you hook your garden hose up to it, start filling when it's full, it'll shut itself off. And then to clean your tank out, because it's stainless and because it all slopes down, these tanks clean really nice. There's dual tank cleaners on the inside of that tank. So while you're running around um, loading up, swapping chemicals when you, need to, when you need to clean out, just spin your garden hose on, turn your uh, tank cleaners on, let that thing rinse down, pump the water on the ground, let it rinse down, pump the water on the ground, um, and then do it again. And instead of sticking your head all the way in the tank and trying to clean everything out that way. So I really like this. Your whole workstation is in one spot. You can run everything from the ground. Like we were talking, you don't need to crawl up top anymore unless you're actually mixing chemical in the top of the tank. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you've really changed the design and the layout on this side. I, I really like it all. I mean, everything I need is within five feet, basically yep. right here. You know, I have my chem, my fresh, anything to do with mixing, cleaning out, fresh water fill, my pumps. You know, I got my battery right here. Yep. This storage locker is nice because, like you said, I meant, um, you know, here's like the charger for your your winch and everything. You can have that in there. Have, uh, this will come with a shelf. Yep. Okay, so there'll be a shelf in here where anything you want. I mean, J150 batteries, chargers. They might be a little heavy for most people, but you know, a fan, a lunchbox, a radio, anything like that. I really like that. Yep. We still have these good Cox hose reels on them. Um, I've tried and worked with a lot of different hose reels. Uh, Cox is by far the best yeah. for, for skid units because you've got so much rattling back and forth, um, driving over rugged terrain. This isn't gonna rattle, this isn't gonna break. Um, they've got the best seals of any, of, of any hose reels that I've used. So when you're dealing with chemical, um, you need a really good you know, seal. And, and uh, I don't even know what you call it, but the, the mechanism that the reel spins yeah. on um, is solid. I haven't had any of those go out on me. Um, and then we put this one inch EPDM hose on everything. So this hose, it's a lot more expensive than going with just a general fuel hose, but fuel hose is naturally porous. Yeah. Um, the reason that it's naturally porous is because you want the, the lubrication from your fuel to keep your fuel hose lubricated so it doesn't dry. crack. Yep. With chemicals, it's different because yep. you, the chemical dries it out, makes your hose crack faster, and it makes it really, really hard to clean. So. This is, is easy to clean out, really good to, to take care of contamination. Um, and just like your fresh water, you've got another 50 foot over here. Cool. Yeah, I mean, like you kind of said on the hose reels, we've tried five or six different brands of hose reels within a year. They're junk. Um, yep. You know, so far out of the road runners we've been running, we've had awesome luck with these Cox reels. Cool. Very cool. I mean, it looks like there's a lot of new features and improvements, user friendliness. You know, you don't yep. really have to crawl around anything. For the most part, if you're not mixing in the tank, you're on the ground the entire time, which is cool. Yep. I'm at the same way there. Uh, when you're putting the drone away, you're in the ground, on the ground yep. for most of the time. The only thing you gotta do is unhook it, really. Yep. So. And from an efficiency standpoint, that's really helped our operation because you can scoot down the edge of the field so you're not wasting time you park in one spot, crawl up top, and then you're ferrying from halfway across the field. We pick up a lot of time because we scoot down the edge of the field, and that's because we don't have to pack anything up. We're not crawling up and down. Drop the drone at the, at the edge of the field and then creep your way forward every two or three loads. It yeah. uh, makes, makes a really big difference. On a skid unit, um, a lot of people would like to land up top. I've chosen not to do that because I don't feel like we've got enough space. Drones are getting bigger every year. Um, and I, I feel like you're asking to get somebody knocked off the top of your, your skid yeah. unit or, or yeah. hit by a prop. So yeah. from, a safety, from a safety and efficiency standpoint, we've chosen to run off the ground and, and it's helped us out a lot. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, and I think too, even, you know, that, you know, there's probably some guys out there that say they don't want to land on the ground because of dirt or dust, something like that. I mean, there's no reason you can't have just a little single axle trailer, little platform or something, yep. you know, and run with this in there. I mean, this is, the versatility seems to be a lot on this. And when you're going from different jobs all day, like, you know, going from pasture one day to quarters a week the next day, um, being able to be flexible mm -hmm. with, with your with your unit and if you want to bring more water it's always easy to grab a trailer and bring more water all yeah. the extra stuff with you and have everything you need in your truck versus get a uh, get a job spray in duck ponds and now you got to figure out how to take everything off your trailer and put it in yeah. your truck this yeah. is everything that you need to go out and spray for the day you can always hook up to a two thousand dollar car trailer and yeah. grab all the extra stuff yeah. that you need later for sure for sure all right well this looks cool uh, thanks for that walkthrough. Let's go ahead and uh, get it back to the shop and let's uh, show them how to unload it and load it um, and talk a little bit more about uh, the pump features and the valve setups. Sounds good. All right, guys, we got the Roadrunner unloaded, uh, nice and simple, forklift. We had some fork extensions, that way we didn't have to drag up the truck too much. But I'm going to go ahead and let Josh finish out, kind of explaining about the pumps and the valves and all that stuff, now that you can get a better view. So yeah, as you saw, um, it was a lot easier to unload now. We moved our fork pockets from the very outside edge to, to in the middle and put 8-inch wide by 4-inch stake pockets in it so you can get fork extensions. Um, run a payloader or big uh, skid steer attachments. And then on the plumbing side, we went up just a little bit on the pump. So we went from a three quarter horse, um, 55 gallon a minute, um, self priming stainless pump to a horse and a quarter um, with a straight suck centrifugal. So what the straight suck centrifugal does for us is it gives us that high flow, low pressure to, to keep our foaming down, but fill the drones quickly um, with a lot higher gallon per minute out of a relatively small pump. Um, so we're not drawing too much power from our generator. This will do 80 gallon a minute um, to the, uh, at the end of the pump and about 36 gallon a minute at discharge. So you'll fill a 20 gallon drone in about 35 to 40 seconds. We pulled all of our controls up front so they're really easy to access. They're solid. Like I was talking earlier, um, our filter is really easy to access right at the front. And then we've got our two one inch cam locks that you can connect any other plumbing attachments that you want. If you look in the back of our pump to get a really good roll, um, we've got a T-Jet uh, quarter inch agitator um, at the back. That allows our whole tank to roll. When you get to about your last 10 or 15 gallons, um, you can go ahead and choke off or shut off agitation to keep from foaming. You just need to make sure that you're turning on and off your pump for your last load or two and then all that same good EPDM hose. So on our fill system, we've got a one-way valve right next to the edge of the tank. That way, when you're cleaning out your tank, you don't have to worry about any contamination in this hose. And then same, we've got a one-way valve here on your freshwater system, so you don't have the water leaking out of your hose all over the place um, when you're done either rinsing your tank or filling your freshwater tank. Cool, yeah, everything looks super easy to maintenance. Uh, you know, your valve or your filter and everything's nice and neat. Like I said, here you can tap into these for your inlets and stuff. Um, yeah, everything looks nice and clean and easy to work on. So if anybody uh, wants to see one of these, you know, stop by for a demo or feel free to get on our website, agrispraydrones.com or spottersaa.com. Um, feel free to check it out or stop on by. Thanks. Thanks, Alex.